Welcome to this video, The Convergence of Prophecies. Sometimes prophecy, standing by itself, is somewhat obscure. However, when you take it in the context of other prophetic announcements, either from the mystics or from our Blessed Mother, then it begins to make sense. And in the prophecies that we'll discuss today, these fit in that category. Before we begin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, the first such prophecy is concerning Fatima, and this was a discussion way back in 1960 by St. Padre Pio, discussing Fatima with Father Gabriel Amorth, and he was asked by Father Gabriel some pointed questions about the third secret of Fatima and what he was concerned about. And he had some grave concerns, Padre Pio, that is, about the third secret. And most of them concerned the church. Now, there was a discussion about other events, such as war and other calamities, However, Padre Pio seemed to be more concerned about the apostasy. And this is noted by a very well-known Catholic author, Jose Maria Zavala, in his book, The Best Kept Secret of Fatima, where he discusses in his book this conversation between Father Gabriel Amorth and St. Padre Pio. So, one of the comments St. Padre Pio had was that Satan was introduced to the bosom of the Church, and in a short time, he will come to rule a false Church." Unquote. He also mentioned a comment that has been much repeated. It's uh, slippers of the Pope comment. He said that Satan has come unto the slippers of the Pope. And of course, this fits in many other prophecies regarding the infiltration of Satan into the summit of the Church that we hear at Akita, as an example, La Salette, and I believe also in the third secret of Fatima, So the other, the other prophecy that I believe this ties into is one that I just became aware of regarding the venerable Fulton Sheen, whose cause has begun for his beatification. And this is a prophecy that I'll read, and it comes from a sermon that he provided in 1948. He, and I quote, he, Satan, will set up a counter church, which will be the ape of the church, because he, the devil, is the ape of God. It will have all the notes and characteristics of the church, but in reverse, and emptied of its divine content. It will be a mystical body of the Antichrist that will, in all externals, resemble the mystical body of Christ. And this you begin to see today, you begin to see this with a humanistic tone that prelates seem to be taking. Some people have commented that the Church appears to want to be an NGO of the United Nations, and NGO being another non-governmental organization, and they seem to be pursuing, in many cases, the desires and the whims of the secular world. And that would tie into this comment by Venerable Fulton Sheen regarding 
that the false church would be emptied of its divine content. Now, it's worth repeating here, and people get confused when discussing these concepts about an anti-church or a false church. The false church is not the Catholic Church. Now, the false church may be a church that people within the Catholic Church wish to create, but it is not the Catholic Church. And an example would be, like back in the Arian heresy, when the Arians created their own heretical churches, they were Arian churches, and they were Arian priests. They were no longer Catholic, even though they took the appearance of them. And that's something that I repeatedly say is a lesson for today that we need to be concerned about and we need to be vigilant about. So this idea of the mystical body of the Antichrist, it ties into another prophecy from St. Bernard of Clairvaux when he talks about the coming of Jesus. And he says that there are, in fact, three comings. There's the first, which was the redemption, and then there is the last coming, which is the final coming. Both the first and the last are coming in the flesh. In the last coming, he's coming in all his glory. But then he says that there is an intermediate coming, a coming between the two, one where he will not come in the flesh, but will come in a matter that will be spirit. It will come in spirit and power, according to St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And this ties together with what we understand to be the illumination of conscience, the correction of conscience, or the warning. Let me read the quote regarding the intermediate coming from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And then we'll go back and discuss this mystical body of the Antichrist. And this is from St. Bernard of Clairvaux, and I quote, The intermediate coming is a hidden one. In it only the elect see the Lord within their own selves, and they are saved. In his first coming, our Lord came in our flesh and in our weaknesses. In the middle coming, he comes in spirit and in power. In the final coming, commonly known as the second coming, he will be seen in glory and majesty. So, in this intermediate coming, we understand that, as I mentioned, to be the prophetic event of the warning. So, when you put these together, what we're left with is we're left with the idea of this intermediate coming. Now, if there's an intermediate coming of Christ, then we can also understand the Antichrist as being a, a coming of the Antichrist in spirit, just like St. Bernard of Clairvaux said that our Lord would come in, in this intermediate coming in spirit and power. And tying th that together which, with uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen's prophecy regarding the mystical body of the Antichrist, what that means is that the coming of the Antichrist is the mystical body of the Antichrist, the false church, just like the body of Christ is his true church. This false church will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. And that ties also together with some statements made by Pope Benedict the 16th, 
when he said things like, the spirit of the Antichrist is growing. So this spirit that we're talking about, it's already prevalent. It also has a relationship to the 100-year prophecy from Pope Leo XIII regarding the 100 years of power given to Satan to persecute the church, to try the church. And the church, indeed, this time, is walking through its Calvary. We find ourselves today, because of this idea of the false church and those who are clamoring for it, they are causing a schism within the church, within the body of Christ. It's equivalent to the crucifixion, the breaking of the body, breaking of the body of Christ. And we are finding ourselves in the final stages of these events. And this is not something that is um, in the dark realms or the margins of prophecy. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, actually in paragraph 677, it mentions that the church must go through its Calvary and in the end share in the resurrection. In other words, the mystical body of Christ will also share in Christ's resurrection. And as the mystical body of Christ goes through its Calvary, you can expect what some of the proclamations from Pope John Paul II where it will come to pass, where he said things like, the church must go through a Calvary, and after the Calvary of the church, it will be renewed. And this idea of the false church, this schism that seems to be occurring right now, is something that perhaps is part of this Calvary. So one of the questions that come to mind is if you talk about the Antichrist as being the mystical body of the Antichurch, or the false church, then what about the possibility of the Antichrist being a person? And as we know, in St. John's letters, he discusses the Antichrist, where he says anyone that rejects Christ is an Antichrist. And there are many Antichrists. And if there were to be one Antichrist, there seems to be many candidates that are running for that spot today. <laughs> I'm not talking about politics necessarily, but there seems to be many that are interested in taking that role, whether they understand that's what they're doing or not. So I, I don't preclude the idea of this mystical body of the Antichrist being also accompanied by someone who appears to fit in that role. But I think primarily what we're looking at today is we're looking at the flip side of this intermediate coming so, intermediate coming of Christ, the illumination of conscience, the warning, the correction of conscience. The flip side is the intermediate coming of the Antichrist. And an appearance of the mystical body of the anti-church. Well, I hope you found this interesting. And please feel free to look up some of these quotes. I mentioned the quote by St. Padre Pio, and that appears in Jose Maria Zavala's book, The Best Kept Secret of Fatima. The other quotes that I mentioned you can easily find via Google. I hope you found this interesting, and God bless.